I don't know about you, but I can sure use a drink. You want one? Gabrielle? Detective Johnson. Hello, Max. I guess you've had it with the police today. Guess I can spare you another minute. Come on in. Thank you. You're not going to tell me you've got another lineup set up already, huh? No, I'm afraid I just came to say goodbye. I'm going back to Arizona. Well, you're not giving up on the case, are you? Well, it's only so much a fish like me out of water can do. It's Rafe's town. It's Rafe's case. He doesn't need me. Well, I... I gotta say, I haven't always agreed with your tactics or your theories. But uh, you worked real hard to try to find the guy that tried to kill Steve. Thanks. I respect you for that. I appreciate it. I just wish the hard work had paid off with an arrest. Hello, Gabrielle. Detective? Gabrielle, Detective Johnson is going back to Arizona. Mm. Don't worry, I'm not gonna ask you to tell me you'll miss me while I'm gone. Frankly, Detective, my one regret that I have is that you didn't find the man we were looking for. That's all that really counts. There we agree. Rafe and I were a little disappointed today when you had a change of heart. Change of heart? Well, for a minute, it looked as if you were going to identify the man that attacked you. Believe me, I wanted to. But I couldn't accuse an innocent man unless I was absolutely certain. How would I be able to live with myself if I sent him to prison? Still, it seems a shame. One word, a nod, and your nightmare would have been over. Well, I'm sure with Rafe on the case, we're going to catch the guy sooner or later. I have complete confidence in Rafe, too. Then it's unanimous. Here's hoping it all works out for the best. Take care, Mrs. Holden. Max? I'm sure you out. So long, detective. He's not such a bad guy after all. Henry, I do not have to explain to you... Spare how... me the prognosis, Doctor. I already know what you're going to say. I work too hard. I need a rest, a vacation or two. Sorry. You know as well as I, it's impossible. I'm not even going to waste my breath trying to reason with you. However, you could delegate more authority to Elizabeth and Bo. What good would that do? It might help you live a little longer. A month, a week, a day. Most men would be grateful for a minute, Henry. I am not most men. We both know the score. My heart condition is long-standing and inoperable. Oh, so you say. Look, even if I were to enter a monastery and do nothing but pray and cultivate my garden, I would still have no more than one year to live. Medical science makes advances every day. You could extend your life for as long as you like, if only you would take care of yourself. Don't spare me this Hippocratic nonsense, Kurt. It doesn't become you. Look, I am still a doctor, and I am concerned with your health. Fine. Keep it for both of us. My sole concern is Joanna. I want to live long enough to see her happily married. That and to hold the grandchild in my arms. A year should be long enough for both. Now, you're forgetting about our plans. They matter, too. Only insofar as they affect my daughter's future. Are you trying to tell me that you don't care about the money, Henry? For a brilliant man, you have a lot to learn, Doctor. Sit. Go on, sit. Let me instruct you in the facts of my life. Unlike Elizabeth, I am not driven by revenge. Unlike you and Beau, it is not a matter of money. Then what is it? Tell me what it is that drives you. For lack of a better word, love. The one love in my life, my daughter Joanna. That's all very noble, Henry, but it's hard... It is not noble. It is a fact. You're looking at a cliché, Doctor. An English aristocrat born with a tarnished silver spoon in his mouth. The Leightons had a title dating back to Richard the Lionheart. 
Unfortunately, that title couldn't purchase fuel to heat the castle. After my father died, my mother, Margaret, married a wealthy commoner to pay the bills. There's no shame in that. Tell that to the boys at the Wellington School. They treated me like an urchin who should have been grateful to clear the dishes in their dining hall. We all have stories to tell about our school days, Henry. Yes. I graduated first in my class, in spite of their snobbery. Then, when I was at Cambridge... Oh, let me guess. You graduated valedictorian there as well? No. No. I won an even greater prize. The love of Caroline Telford. The Telfords? The wealthiest family in Britain. And the noblest. Uh, save only the royals. When their daughter informed them that she wished to marry me, they did everything in their considerable power to prevent it. They even threatened to cut her off with a shilling. But Caroline was not about, not about to be intimidated. She married me anyway. Good for her. No wonder you loved her. Loved her. I adored her. And after the wedding, her family came round, I bet. They never spoke to her again. Broke her heart, though she never showed it. And then, when Joanna, our only child, was born, they wouldn't even acknowledge her. It can make a man very bitter. Bitter and determined. I swore to give Caroline everything she surrendered by marrying me. But then, when Joanna was only two, Caroline fell ill. And I lost her. I wanted to join her in death. One night, I sat in my study with my hand on the drawer where I kept my revolver. It was then that little Joanna came in and climbed up on my lap and said she wanted a bedtime story. That night, I swore I would move heaven and earth to make that child happy and have her acknowledged even if it meant... I'm beginning to understand. Even if it meant dealing with the friends of Alex Crown. I needed money. I didn't care where it came from. Through my mob connections, I met Alex. Through Alex, his son Robert. The moment Joanna laid eyes on that young man... I... Now, that's how you and Alex made your pact. Yes. I agreed to protect his treasure chest of ill-gotten gains. Millions in Swiss francs. I also promised to protect his son in exchange. Alex promised that his son would marry Joanna. My God, it sounds like something from the Middle Ages. I prefer to see it as a civilized arrangement between gentlemen. <sighs> Tell that to Alex's friends. They're hardly gentlemen. I know. Alex's murder convinced me I had to cleanse myself of my mob connections. Even more so when I learned about my heart condition. That is when I became involved in Elizabeth's plan. By helping her gain control of the Buchanan Empire, I ensured Joanna a comfortable and dignified future. A devoted, if devious father, she would be proud to know how far you've come. No. No, she must never learn it. Calm down, Henry. I only meant. I don't care what you meant. To clear myself of the mob, I had to spend every franc of Alex's money. If Robert finds out, he can expose me. He can expose my past. Now, he can... Henry, don't overtask yourself. Now, I promise I will never tell. 
I need more assurance than that. I need Elizabeth's plan to work so that I can replace the money I borrowed from the Crown account. Even more, I need Robert to marry Joanna and set everything right before I... before I depart the scene. Now you understand, Doctor. Now you see what drives me. I can die a thousand deaths, but I cannot lose the love and respect of my daughter. I have never, physically, hurt so much as a fly. But to keep her love and respect, I would gladly kill. Miss. Yes. My friend, I believe you would. Rob? Rob, come on, honey. Let me just talk to you for one minute, please. All right, Cassie. Come on. I know you've been avoiding me, and I don't blame you. Cassie, please. No, let me just say this. I've been suspecting you and accusing you of all sorts of things, and now I realize that it's all her fault. If you mean Joanna, yes. it's... Rob, she has been spreading the most incredible lie. I mean, she actually claims that her father came up with the million dollars for my ransom. And she said the whole reason he did it was to get me out of your life. I know, I told you it was pretty incredible. I said the same thing to her, only I don't think I went nearly far enough. Anyway, I'm here to warn you. We have got to stop her, Rob. Who knows what she's going to do again and try and get us apart? We cannot let her. We can't. And we cannot let Joanna or her father or anyone come between us again. Clint, uh, I want to apologize for taking things into my own hands. I know I should have talked to you first, but, uh, hey, let's just chalk it up to inexperience. I'm still getting used to all this high finance stuff. I, you know, sometimes I guess it just goes to your head. Never used to. You've been around money all your life. But you never used to let it run your life. What you did today was unconscionable, if not unforgivable. But right, Clint, now come on. Hey, we're talking about one lousy paper mill and a printing company. You still don't get it, do you, Bo? We're talking about people. People, you know, like your family, people. Now, if you think you can sell Olympic, you go ahead and try. But I'm gonna do my damnedest to see that that doesn't happen. Clint, let's not turn this into something personal. Now, this is business. You're gonna have to put that bleeding heart mentality aside. Bleeding heart? Bleeding heart? Is that what compassion and decency mean to you? Huh? Cord was right. You have changed, Bo. You have changed a hell of a lot more than I've been willing to admit, and a hell of a lot more than I care to be around. Now, you've been warned. You take your best shot, because I sure as a hell am gonna take mine. Hey, Clint! What's the matter with you? What's wrong? Cassie. No, I know what it is. This is really stupid of me. I mean, here I come in, I bombard you with all these things Joanna has said, and I don't even give you a couple minutes to absorb the shock. It isn't that. No, really, I'm just... I am so anxious to get her out of our lives, Rob. Whatever you say, whatever it takes, I will work with you on this, but it's important that we both forget about Joanna. We can't forget her. I can't forget her. What Joanna told you about her father giving me the money, it's the truth. I lied to you. I've lied to you about the money and about my feelings for Joanna. No, no, it's not true. Now, you're protecting her, and you don't have to do that. Not after all the lies she's told, not after everything she has done to keep us apart. Damn it, Cassie, grow up! Now, just...
Joanna has not lied to you. I have. Now open your eyes and look at the truth. No. Because it's not true. She is taking advantage of you. She's trading in on your old, dead feelings for her to keep us apart. Now, I know you love me. I know it. Say it. Tell me that every word she said is a lie. Say it. Rob, say something. Cassie, I tried to make this easy for you. I'm... I'm so sorry. I don't think it's ever easy. Not for the last time. What Joanna said is true. I love her, Cassie. And I'm gonna marry her. <sighs> I know how painful that was for you, my darling. 